Welcome to part two of Rational Exponents. We're going to pick up this lesson on Rational ex Exponents by discussing the properties of exponents. The properties of exponents when you first learned them in an Algebra 1 class as they apply to integers also apply to Rational Exponents. We have six little rules to remember here. The product of powers when you are multiplying two powers of like bases we add the powers. The powers of a power when you or raising a power to another power. We multiply those powers to get a new power. The power of a monomial, and uh, this is like the distributive property of powers, where everything inside the parentheses or the monomial, every term or part of the monomial, not term, but part of the monomial, needs to be raised to that power. Uh, negative exponents, where we have a to the negative m power to express it as a positive power we put that under one or we inverted the quotient of powers rule where we are dividing two like bases we subtract their exponents to get the new exponent and the quotient of a power which says you have a rational number being raised to a power that's equivalent to the both the numerator and the denominator being raised to the power separately we'll use those properties to help us simplify these numbers, we can do this in one of two ways. The first method is going to be using the properties of exponents, working with this exponent. So let's just go ahead and copy down the negative 32 to the 3 fifths power. And working with that, since this represents the roots or the index of the radicand, we want to think of what number we can raise to the fifth power to get negative 32. And that, of course, is negative 2. So we could write this as negative 2 to the fifth power being raised to the 3 fifths power. Now, when we have a power to a power, remember, we multiply those two powers. So we're going to have negative 2 to the fifth times 3 fifths power. 5 times 3 fifths is equal to 3. So that leaves us with negative 2 to the third power. And negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Now, the other method is to convert negative 32 to the 3 fifths power into radical form and simplify it that way. So, in radical form, this would be negative 32, the fifth root of negative 32 raised to the third power. Much like we thought over here, we have to write this as a power of 5 underneath the radical. The radicand as a power of 5 would be negative 2 to the 5th power. The 5th root of negative 2 to the 5th leaves us negative 2, the same place we were in method number 1. And negative 2 to the 3rd power is negative 8. So you can see the two different methods here to simplifying numbers with rational exponents. You can work with the properties of exponents, or you can work with radical form. In this example, we before we even go to simplify this, we're going to want to convert this decimal into a fraction. That will give us 4 to the negative. Now here we go, 3 and 1 half is negative 7 halves. So we want to evaluate that. I prefer to use method 1, 4 to the negative 7 halves power. You have to think of what number we can raise to the second power to get 4. Of course, that's 2. So we have 2 to the second power. To the negative 7 halves power. We multiply those two powers, so that gives us 2 to the 2 times negative 7 halves power. 2 times negative 7 halves will give us 2 to the negative 7 power. Here comes the negative exponent power, or rule, that's going to be written as 2 over, or 1 over 2 to the 7th. And 2 to the 7th is 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32 times 2 is 64, times 2 more is 128. So that would be 1 over 
128. Method two would have us using the radical form. So we would write that as the square root of 4 to the negative 7 power. We can write the square root of 4 as the square root of 2 squared to the 7th power. The square root of 2 squared is 2 to the negative 7 power. Which, remember, can be written as 1 over 2 to the 7th. And we just evaluated this, which gives us 1 over 128. So we can see both methods here again, one using the properties of exponents and one using radical form. Finally, we need to write 16y to the negative eighth, all raised to the negative three-fourth power in simplest form. To do this, we need to first apply the power of a monomial rule which says we need to apply this negative 3 fourths to the 16 and to the y to the negative 8th. We'll do that by multiplying the exponents. 16 to the first to the negative 3 fourths is 16 to the negative 3 fourths. And that would be y to the negative 8 times negative 3 fourths. Continuing our work down here. Negative 8 times negative 3 fourths gives us a positive 6, so that would be y to the 6th power. And 16 to the negative 3 fourths needs to be moved from where it's at. And if you can imagine this over 1, all over 1, it needs to be moved from the numerator into a denominator position, which would give us 16 to the 3 fourths power. Now, all we have to do is simplify the denominator. The numerator is going to stay y to the 6th. The denominator, now we have to think of a number that we can raise to the fourth power. That gives us 16, and that would be 2. So this could be written as 2 to the fourth to the three-fourths power. Remember to bring the denominator along, y to the sixth. This would be 2 to the fourth times three-fourths. Four times three-fourths gives us 3, so that would give us 2 to the third power. So finally, we have this simplified. It's going to be y to the 6th power over 8. When simplifying expressions with rational exponents, it's good to remember the six properties we talked about at the beginning of this lesson. This has been Mr. Pine. I hope you've enjoyed your ride.